Lily, can you say Subaru? Subaru. How are we doing? This is JT at RubberCityMotoring.com. Um, behind me is my 2013 Subaru WRX STI. Uh, the point of this video is give you a kind of quick, kind of uh, in-depth review on the OEM Audio Plus uh, audio system. Now, long story short, when I got this car, it has factory navigation, factory subwoofer. Audio quality, mm, it's okay. I'm going to show you sort of what's going on in it here in a second, but um, OEMAudioPlus.com, they kind of came up as like a subwoofer option, I thought. So I called them, talked to them, and they said, no, it's more than that. Um, it's not just a lower profile sub that fits better in the hatch. It's a full amp. It's a full wiring harness setup. It's everything that redoes all the audio in the car, not just the sub. So that's what I'm going to get into today. If you check them out on their website or on YouTube, uh, it's there, there's a lot as far as like in-depth install, step-by-step -step video. So I'm not going to go into a full step-by-step. -step. I will show you pieces along the way here. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to get going here today. RubberCityMotoring.com. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. Subscribe if you like this. If you want to see more from the Subaru, let me know. But uh, here we go. So in the back here, this is the factory Subaru Kicker subwoofer. Uh, I believe it's a 10 inch job. Uh, it was on the sticker, my window sticker, 540 some dollars. So not a cheap option. Very punchy bass, as in like it's not like uh, it, it, it. Let me put it this way. I did a quick walkthrough on this uh, on YouTube here yesterday. The best way I can describe this subwoofer as I would have liked it in high school. And it's not like that it's bad. It's just it's very punchy loud bass to the point like say you listen to talk radio of all things or uh, you know I don't know anything at all it, uh, it it's just too much bass it's, to, it's for me that's my own personal taste and you know you might love this sub it, it could be something that works great for you but if I show you this here it is meant for the Subaru here it fits in there it bolts right in the wirings there and it 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 does have its negatives, like you look at that hatch, I can't, because I have, if you can, the sun is too bad, I have a baby seat on that side, can't flip that seat down, and I have the sub on this side, can't flip that seat down now, so, yeah. So that's that, I'm going to take that out there, and it's for sale right now, I just, you know, I'm not, never going to use it again, so if you're interested in that, let me know. But that is a OEM hatchback subwoofer. The first few steps of this are pretty simple. You're uh, disconnecting the battery cable. You're removing, obviously, the factory subwoofer. And I'll, I'll take that out and show you that because that's always something that kind of interests people, like what this car came with new. Um, the rear cargo liner gets taken out. And also, the uh, you're supposed to turn the wheels all the way to the left because you have to snake, which I'll show you this in a minute, this big wiring harness up to the battery, the engine compartment because it runs to the battery. So. A few little things here before you disconnect the negative battery cable, but uh, gonna get this crack in here and a lot of interior panel removal and things. So there are tools for that. I have a few of them which I'll do, but you know, like anything, a lot of times they don't work how they're supposed to. So hopefully nothing breaks here. Fingers crossed. So I'm not sure how well this is gonna transfer, but um, I'm gonna play this for you and show you factory base just so you can maybe get an idea of what this actually does here. So assuming that came out fairly decent, it's just, it is base. It's definitely an improvement over stock, which has hardly any base. Um, but the thing is, it's just for me, is too much. I got a two-year-old in the back seat. If I put on anything that we both listen to, she listens to, it's just it's no good. It's I don't know. I I'm, I know I'm whining about it, but it you know it came with the car. It's how it is. So that's why OEM Audio Plus comes into play here. So my first steps, like I said, I did the the wheel turning. I have to disconnect the negative battery cable, and then I have to remove uh, subwoofer, rear tray, uh, rear seat bottom, uh, and then some trim panels that sort of stuff. I have to pull a car seat out of here too, out of the back, the, the baby seat. So I'm going to get that going here and then I'll show you where I'm at with the rest of this.
So just for the fun of it, the factory sub is out. I wanted to show this thing. Um, factory wired in. There's the amp on the bottom. It's powered. Has the brackets and little thumb screws that come out. And then that wire right there is where that connects. From what I've been told, it runs to the factory front speaker to get its source. So not the best place to run this. It's definitely not... Uh, run we'll say like to the battery or something like that like a you know an aftermarket sub would be but um that's sort of the factory setup there if you want this let me know i'm looking to get rid of it so gotta pull out this mat and the uh tray down here to get the wiring started and i do have the back seat bottom out which is right there my garage is full of kid toys and stuff so uh yeah and uh just for the record it doesn't need to be on a lift but this is sitting here from my impala build um, I've just been parking on it, but it definitely uh, helps put everything sort of at a taller, workable level, I guess, for this. So, all right, next steps. Situation update. Spare tire is out. Doesn't necessarily need to be pulled, but this is a good time to do a couple of things. Um, you know, it, it's something I always forget about until it's probably too late. Uh, check your air pressure in your spare tire. Mine was 40 PSI low, so I'm going to top that off there. Before I put it back in, um, I pulled some trim panels off. I apologize, it is a dark interior. Uh, on the back seat bolts, these are all 14 millimeter. There's four seat bolts, but the uh, back two have some little plastic covers on them, and uh, this one on the, uh, we'll say, the passenger back required a uh, wrench instead of a socket with a driver so that's going on there and uh, I'm about ready to pull the front seat here and uh, important safety tip is uh, you gotta disconnect the battery that's step one and I haven't done it yet I've just been farting around waiting to get to it um, there are connectors under this seat and I'm guessing if you undo them with the battery connected you're gonna blow your airbag um, in the seat there which wouldn't be good so I'm gonna disconnect that battery now and then I could uh, pull the seat out because all the bolts are out and then a uh, little tip on that there's four bolts in there the back two are the shiny ones at least in my car so uh, it'll help you put it back together if you're doing this and you see my trim pieces are out and I pulled the weather stripping too to gain access so moving right along here this isn't like a really hard job so far. It's just, it looks maybe like it. It's like 95 degrees out today. I have the garage door open, so um, I'm not really working hard, but it's hot as anything out here. The seat's out. All these trim pieces are out. Um, you basically pry it. You're, you're getting to the point here where you can snake the main sub wire all the way up here to the front. I'm gonna go back here and show you this now. Um, per their video instructions, you're going to run the sub wire up and in between the seat and this metal pan, we'll say, and up to the front. Well, more like up there to start. That's kind of where I'm at. So I'm going to get this big wiring harness set up here and see uh, how she goes. But um, after that, you kind of start reassembly as you get it up there. It's amazing the amount of work had to go into just getting the wire to the subwoofer so it's a serious kit that's for sure all this work I've done and showed the seat removal everything now the amp goes up there but all these panel removals that's just for the, um, the sub umbilicals they call it if you can make that out uh, next along the lines here I've got the wires sort of snaked up there run to here from there you basically start removing your dash stuff you got to remove the radio I'm gonna move to the climate controls I have to remove the hood or the binnacle thing whatever you call that up there um, basically you're kinda of working the wire along it's gonna basically go along behind the dash to the radio and then it's gonna snake up to the under the hood so moving up along here and uh, yeah it's it's not too bad this radio this nav has so many connections holy cow it's not what I'm used to. I mean, there's probably one, two, three, six connectors, and there's a ground bolt on the side of it. So, uh, not, I mean, not hard, but, you know, definitely a lot of things to pull off of there. So, that's where we're at now. What I decided to do, I found that the factory subwoofer 
this whole mess here, it goes to the hedge unit. I was under the impression it went to the front door, but uh, it does go to the front uh, radio. So I undid that, connected the uh, OEM Audio Plus now in line. So basically you put that in line and now these go to the radio. Originally, um, the factory sub had a very similar setup, but uh, just very underpowered and weak too. Also, uh, if you don't mind my dirty carpet, I haven't run the sweeper yet. This is, uh don't want to wake anybody up, but my uh, amp is installed now, wired up, and then you have to make sure your seat wires are where they need to be too. But factory studs under there, they give you the nuts, it bolts right in, it's going to be hidden, which I love, so you won't really see it in the way or anything. So moving right along here, lots of body panels though come off during this whole thing. Not too hard, but definitely a little bit time consuming. Before I put the subwoofer in, I wanted to show these mounting locations. You are going to lose functionality of two of these cargo hooks. First one being up there towards the front by the uh, back seat. Right there's my factory sub mount, which I'm going to remove here. And then the other one, which tough to see there with my lighting, but uh, right there, the other hook. And then there's the wiring there. Um, I, I'm i hoping I haven't tried it yet, but it should work, and I'll, uh, you'll see here at the end. I do have that tray that goes in the back, and I want to put that in before the sub. So I'm just going to make sure that fits, and then I'll put the sub in here. Subwoofer is installed. The mounting brackets fit like a glove. Literally, this thing is just pretty well locked in there. It fits with the map. There's even a cutout you can see over there. It's on the same side of the uh, factory cargo liner. The mount on that side over there, just it's perfect. It's literally the best possible way you could make this sub work in the back. The uh, factory privacy shade still works and uh, good to go there. I also kind of uh, started reassembly a little bit because you're supposed to sort of reassemble as you go. But you can see my uh, wires right there. You wire tie it strategically as you go. But uh, I've got all of this installed up to here. Obviously the back seat's not in yet. And if you go up here, there's the amp. i uh, got some various trim pieces sitting here. The seat's actually ready to go back in. I just haven't done it yet. I have the wiring is run up along here in through there and it is sticking out right there uh, you know like I said the uh, factory did have a subwoofer I pulled all that wiring out because it was actually in line so I want to get rid of that it basically would have been double in line which I don't know if that's good bad and different but at the same time um, I'm getting rid of it so I figured why not they just ran it up along the uh, driver's side uh, footwell there and up under the dash now, I have to move on. If you can see over there, that yellow wire, that is the main power wire. You have to snake it up through the fender under the hood. So I'm going to get to that next. But before that, I'm going to plug the radio in here and uh, just get that out of the way. But uh, not too bad so far. Honestly, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a clever setup. It really is. It's nothing hacked together or anything. It's, it's definitely you're getting what you pay for with this for sure. Kind of in a dark spot of the garage, but... This is probably one of the scariest parts, but then turned out to be one of the easiest. Um, you you lower or loosen the uh, the trim piece down here, the skirt. You remove the whatever that's called, the the side trim piece there. Loosen the wheel well liner, and the wire comes through basically a uh, the sunroof drainage cap. You drill a small hole in that and then it fishes up the fender right there's the yellow wire you can you can see it right there it comes up and then it's gonna basically be uh, wired in but after you get all your clips off and everything there um, this is like my junk section of the garage here all this stuff but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it I mean you're gonna break some clips and stuff but you know you can just put those on to, to hold all the pieces parts back on but that's pretty much it now I just got to put everything back together and secure the wire and uh, wire it up to the battery here and I'll show you that next 
engine bay. So, uh, if you can make it out up there, barely, uh, that loom runs along here, it zip tied all along the fender, and then uh, there's a fuse terminal here, I just zip tied it right there, then it connects to the post on the positive. Uh, there was a crimp connection here, which you have to crimp and then uh, just heat it up with a heat gun to uh, kind of melt the heat shrink and the solder. And all that's really left is me putting my uh, fuse in there. But I mean really if you, other than the sub obviously, this is the only thing you're going to see ever is this wire coming out. Which, and it's all loomed and they give you extra loom and really good stuff there though. So uh, I'm going to do the final step here and see what happens. So install is done. Um, you know, I was at this all day, off and on. I was, you know, filming, I was uh, helping with my kids, stuff like that. But I was at it a good five and a half hours here with, you know, taking my time and stuff. If you're somebody that knows these cars, you've had panels off before, that would help. But, you know, at the same time, I'd plan at least four hours to do it right. Now, fit, finish, install, everything, spot on. Super easy to do. You follow the video, you follow the instructions, there's nothing left to chance. There's enough wire, they didn't short you on loom, everything fit like it was supposed to. Solid, solid job there. Now I just got back from a drive and testing it out. Wow. Um, Alright, the best way I can compare this, if you go back to some of my older videos or reviews, I've driven like those really expensive uh, GM cars like a Cadillac CTS, uh, Buick Regal GS, uh, even like a a Suburban with all of them have that Bose sound, high-end audio, couple thousand dollar option with nav. This is on par with that, at least in my short time using it. It has very good highs, it's got a just enough bass so you know this is here, but at the same time it's not that just high school I put 212s in my trunk bass. It is unbelievably better. I'm so excited to drive this and just try different things that I listen to. I don't listen to just music. I listen to podcasts. I listen to, you know, serious stuff, stuff on serious like, you know, uh, Raw Dog Comedy, Howard Stern, any of that stuff. I am guessing it's going to sound perfect with this system. Now, um, if you are somebody who's wanting this car for performance mods or something like that, I don't really know if this is going to be the best thing for you. I mean, you are adding a little bit of weight. You're adding an extra sub in the back if you didn't have one. But at the same time, if you like audio and you don't want to screw with, like, new speakers, taking it somewhere, a do-it-yourself all-in-one kit, this is it from OEM Audio Plus. Check them out, oemaudioplus.com. They're on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere like that. Very small story, then I'm going to wrap this up. I had a question on the install because my wiring looked different than the video. I sent an email out to the guy I've been working with there, his name is Daniel. He literally emailed me and called me and it's a Sunday today. And I get he knows I'm making a review on it, but still, it was Sunday. He, he got in touch with me, he left a voicemail, he texted me, he said call me back. I called him back and left a message with him. We texted back and forth today on questions unbelievable customer service and really just look at it this way if you're not doing a review on it I am guaranteeing you that they will be there with you every step of the way so audio upgrade in a Subaru or anything they carry go with them flat out if you like all-in-one stuff like not having to strip wires run new wires it's just so easy to do and I am more than happy with it now, and I'm more than more than excited to, to drive this car. So thank you for watching. Check their video if you're doing this yourself, but this is just a quick, like, condensed version of the install and my opinions on it. So if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. If you want to see more on the Subaru, let me know what I should do. Uh, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, any of that stuff. But uh, thank you for watching. Um, I'm super excited, and uh, yeah, check them out, oemaudioplus.com, rubbercitymotoring.com, see ya.